Hi there, welcome to another Friday feature for what is the 8th of September 2023. And in this week's episode, I'm just going to show you a new tool that we've recently just been experimenting with, which looks at some methods to acquire um, crash data from airbag control modules. Um, certainly here in the UK and Europe, we have limited support for European vehicles. So with the Bosch CDR toolkit that will cover some vehicles, but not all. Um, we have another tool that's globally available called Collision Sciences, and that's a tool called Crash Scan. And those really are the only two tools that we can get crash data interpreted from, which adds some meaning to it. So when we're in a situation whereby either the vehicle's unsupported by those two tools, we have to approach the manufacturer of the airbag control module to see what data types are stored and it may mean sending that module overseas to that tier one provider in order for them to carry out the read. Now that can be quite an expensive and time consuming process because if I give you the ballpark figures for a read from some of the tier ones, you're somewhere between two to four thousand pounds for them to read an airbag control module and give you the data that's on them. Plus you need court orders, plus you need the permission of the owner or the manufacturer um, of the vehicle as well. So it is quite a um, convoluted process to do that. Now what this sort of method looks at is other tools that we've got at our disposal where we can at least access the hexadecimal data or see whether or not data is stored on the airbag control module. So this is a relatively new tool to market. It's marketed really for cl for clearing crash data off um, airbag control modules, whereby if somebody buys a second-hand airbag control module that's got crash data on it, then you would be able to clear um, the crash data from the airbag control module and then use that module again in another vehicle. We know that that goes on in the aftermarket. People can't afford to buy uh, new airbag control modules for vehicles. They are fairly expensive. Um, we bought one not so long ago for a job that we were working on and that cost us in the region of £750 ex VAT to buy the um, airbag control module itself new from the dealer. So you can understand why people will go down this route of um, getting an airbag control module reset by a company that offers this process using some of these tools. But we thought we'd give you an insight as to what these tools are doing a little bit and how we might be able to leverage um, these tools to show that at least data exists. Um, there are limited tools on the market for us to be able to read airbag control modules and see the hexadecimal data. If we are plugging in a diagnostic tool, we may get the fault codes that are on there and some information around um, when airbags might have gone off and that kind of thing. But as regards translating the data that's contained in there around what crash investigation are seeking to find, then it does become a little bit problematic. So this tool, as I say, was launched the early part of 2023. And invariably, to read an airbag control module, you would normally be having to take that unit apart and to interact with the EEPROM chip, either by desoldering it or soldering onto the board to get a read. The development of this tool means that the manufacturers have made it somewhat easier in the sense that we only need to connect to um, the pins that are on the airbag control module itself on the connection ports rather than having to um, take the unit apart and start uh, requiring soldering and desoldering skills. So you can understand why there would be a market for this because not everybody is proficient in desoldering um, chips and um, putting them back onto the units as well, which is a job in itself. So we have this interface here. The tool is called a CG70. I will put a link to it on the uh, lesson below this video. And just so you can see it on the um, open internet, it is available. It does come from China. It's in the region of £400 to buy. And the interface basically plugs into the back of the computer with the USB connection. And then you've a 12 volt power supply that goes into the back of this unit as well. But I've got to bear in mind, once I put that on, it's 12 volts into this system, because I've got it rigged up, then um, the airbag control module will be live. As you can see in the software, when I've opened it up, it's can't see the um, 
it can't see the interface until you've got the 12 volts plugged in. Now, of note, if you're going to buy one of these, the um, charging port, the 12 volt charging port, doesn't come with a unit. You only get this box, these leads, and the cable that goes into the back of the laptop. So you do need to um, pick up a universal um, charging port in order for this to operate certainly if you are UK based and that's because it's coming from China and we will have all sorts of different um, 12 volt charging adapters across the globe for different power supplies that um, are across uh, the globe as well so that's essentially what you get in the box the software um, is on their website and you download it from their website it is a little bit convoluted to get it off but a um, couple of steps and a bit of patience and you will get that off so what we would do to see whether or not this software supports our airbag of choice is there's two ways we can do it. We can go through a brand search down the left hand side or we can simply type in the part number at the search bar at the top. So I've got a Jaguar Land Rover airbag control module here. This is out of a Range Rover Evoque, a 2017 vehicle. It's unsupported for us guys here in the UK and Europe with regards to getting crash data from it. We do know the vehicle has been involved in a crash. So if we look at that part number, the GJ32 number, and then I'll start to do a search on that um, within the software. And hopefully it should just narrow it down And the remainder of the numbers on the module are 14D374AB. So I know that it's this one here. So I select that second one. Now what that then allows me to do, once that's highlighted, is if I come over to the right-hand side, you can see the mouse is moving up to this um, red icon, which is a picture icon. I can click on that. And it then gives me three options as to which airbag control module this might be. As you can see in the top, um, this would be in a Ford vehicle. Ford and Jaguar Land Rover are well uh, interconnected, for those that aren't aware, or were. Um, but we're looking at the Land Rover one, so i come down to this next one. Then that gives me the pinout, basically, for where I need to connect the ground and the 12 volts in order to get power to this unit on the left-hand side. And then on the right hand side, I've got the can high and the can low signals that we'll be using for the box to interface with a unit in order to work with the software and for it to have communication and for it to read. Now, as a point of note, um, those pins that have been identified in this um, diagram within the software are actually incorrect. So it's always a good idea to... Um, seek some corroboration of what you are seeing on these um, images if you are using this bit of software. Um, the reason that we found that out is because in addition to the software, we've also um, got the wiring diagrams for this particular module from the dealership to make sure that um, the two were corroborating and are actually right. Um, so there is some slight issues in respect of them labeling these um, pins up correctly or incorrectly and uh, the reason for it really is if you can see on the right hand side um, part right at the very top you can see some pins but they are actually on the second row down so you've actually a row of pins that aren't there but the manufacturer identifies those top row of pins as um, you know some of the numbers and that's where the misalignment comes because the actual pins on the can high and can low are actually the ones directly above what are shown in the diagram there so as we can see we've got a can high and a can low going into the port at the right hand side just above those um, ones that is identified in the wiring diagram the 12 volts and ground going into the other side those were confirmed to be correct so those just clip on to those pins and once you've got those clipped on then we are ready to get some power into the interface and start to um, read this EEPROM that's on this particular module so if I take that back I've got this highlighted what I'll do now is I will connect this 12 volts um, to the back of this 
board. Sorry, this is your user interface. That will mean that that is live now. So I don't want to be touching any of those wires and really that should be clamped down just to stop it moving around and generating new data if it thinks it's in a vehicle. But for the purposes of this, um, we're just going to try to read the EEPROM. So you can see I've got the read EEPROM icon at the top right. I'm going to press that. So I've got an error message. As I always say, it's always good to fail, and I probably know why this is, because I don't think I've connected the USB to the back of the computer. There you go. So now I've plugged that in, it's acknowledged that I've registered this. Device is ready, we'll try again, read EEPROM. It's always good to um, show things going wrong because uh, invariably things do go wrong. Uh, and this will take, I don't know, a couple of minutes to um, read the data off the EEPROM. As you can see, it's giving us some messages as it's going through as to what it's doing. And then we've got the progress bar that's giving us an indication as to how far through that read is. And we just leave that. It'll probably take uh, a couple of minutes for that to, to finally read. And then we are able to um, save save that file, which um, I've already read this EEPROM already. And you can see down at the left hand side, the icon GC70 underneath there is the bin file that will be saved as a consequence of doing that particular read. So I'll leave it running in the background to read it. But what I'll do is I'll open up the file, the bin file to show you the data that we've already got from this unit. And as you can see, this is opened in WinHex, which is a um, application that you can use to open binary files. And this is essentially all the zeros and ones that are on this unit. And it's quite a big file of text. I'm not gonna go through, um, I'm not gonna go through it all for you. But as you can see where there is no data, you've got all those zeros. And then where there is data, you've got obviously the hexadecimal data in there. So you might just be able to see at the right hand side there, that is where the VIN is stored because JLR VINs do start with that particular reference number. So we know that that hex in there is relating to the VIN of the vehicle. And then as we come down, come down this page, start to see a lot more data in these areas further down. So we can see all that hexadecimal data there suggesting that there is crash data stored on this airbag control module and other areas where it's blank. So we do need some assistance to interpret that data and we've got to look at methods on how to do that. But as I say, um, getting the data is one task, interpreting it is another. This is just showing you how you would potentially get data from an airbag control module um, when it's unsupported by Bosch or CrashScan. Um, or I guess if you're using the Burla DLC adapter, that has also the facility to go in and read this sort of data as well. So that tool is also doing a similar job to what, um, to what this tool is doing. You can never have enough tools within the automotive industry, so it's always good to have uh, a couple of choices with regards to whether a vehicle is going to be supported for you to get um, the data from. I've not gone through that list of supported data on this um, system, so I don't know the extent of the coverage, but everyone I've checked so far, it is on there. So if I go back now to this, it's straight away offering me up the option to save that file. It's finished reading it. Um, I will just save it with a different name on the end so it doesn't get confused because it's already got one. Put one on there. Click save. And there we go. It's all done. So that is essentially how we would read the um, 
raw data off an airbag control module using the CG70 um, interface that is a bit user friendly if you are wanting to just go straight into the pins rather than messing about with reading the EEPROM direct. And I guess it's a bit of a market disruptor for those people with um, skills around desoldering EEPROMs and what have you um, and reading them direct because there's no need for people to, to do that if they were using somebody uh, in the automotive industry to do that side of things for them. This tool might allow them to, to do it themselves. So as you can see, we could clear this crash data off there as well we could read the dtcs um, we could write a new eprom so we could write a virgin file to this unit and make it blank again so that it would potentially operate again in a vehicle like i said that's not what we're about um we're purely looking at this from being able to read the data um, out of that system so very similar to a direct to module read with a bosch um, cdr tool in some regards because the bosch cdr tool is essentially when you're going direct to module, you've got those big connection ports that go into that unit, but I would hazard a guess that there's only actually four pins being used when you are going into that. And we've we've kind of experimented with that in a in a job where the airbag control module was damaged and identified these four pins as the ones required to get the data off um, a Bosch supported system. And it's just obviously a bit more robust. You're not as uh, fiddly and you're not having to work out which pins are the can high and can low because they're already um, in the interface itself and doing the job for you. Um, this is probably a step back from that for those people that are familiar with doing direct to module reads on airbag control modules using the Bosch tool. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, then put them into the um, community area and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, like I said, we're always looking out for different tools that can assist us. And this is just one area that we've had an eye on for a while that we wanted to just sort of check out and test. And if anybody's interested in um, you know, buying this tool or want to know a little bit more about it that's not covered in the video, then just reach out to us. more than happy to have a conversation with you about it. Put the links to the tool below the video. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll be back next week for another Friday feature.